This is an introduction on using Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets to do engineering calculations. This is an introductory problem. It's part of the um, engineering uh, course on using computers. And it's called Programming for Engineers. Here's the course website. And um, if you come on the right to homework, this is going to be the very first assignment on Excel. And we have six assignments that we'll walk through. This is going to be the very first one, and it's going to be problem number two. Okay, so this problem number two right there. Um, so we have a, a worksheet within a workbook. So if you think about a book, for example, okay, now a book consists of uh, you know many pages, and the same thing exists in a uh, the spreadsheet these spreadsheet tools. That this would be called a, a workbook, and then within that. We have work uh, sheets. Okay, so we're going to create a new worksheet within this workbook, and a workbook can create multiple of these sheets, kind of like pages within a book. Okay, so we have this uh, this heated flat plate. Okay, and this is going to be hot. I'll put th for hot, and then we have a cold fluid that's flowing over the top of it. Okay, and I'll say that's T cold. And it's flowing over with a velocity V. And we have a couple of the properties of the uh, water. This, uh, we have a, uh, a viscosity. Uh, we have a density. We have a, um, we also have a thermal conductivity, okay. Okay, and then a heat capacity, C to P. So if you don't remember some of these constants or what they're used for, you know, don't worry about that right now. Just think of this as uh, we're going to be doing some of these calculations using these numbers that we're giving you at this point. Okay, and so we have um, a couple correlations that relate how much heat is going to be transferred away from this hot plate, and that's going to be Q. So the expression for Q is right uh, up here at the top, which is um, the H, this is our heat transfer coefficient, times our delta T. And our delta T um, is going to be the hot temperature minus the cold temperature. Okay, now um, H has a couple different um, you know, dependencies here. H is right here in the, we call this the Nisselt number. Okay, don't worry if you haven't heard of these before, or if you don't remember them. Um, we're going to solve for H. Um, we'll just multiply K over here, and then divide by L, and there's our expression for H. Now along the way, we could calculate a Nisselt number first, and then uh, calculate H after that. Uh, this depends on a couple different uh, parameters here, a couple different uh, properties that we're going to be uh, calculating for the fluid, the Prandtl number, and then also the Reynolds number as well. And that Reynolds number will go in right here and the Prandtl's number will go in right there. Okay, so these basically this is just a complicated calculation that might be typical of an engineering design problem. And I want to show you how to do this uh, both in Excel and in Google Sheets. So let's go ahead and get started in Excel. To open up Excel, just um, if it's installed, type Excel and that'll bring up a new Excel uh, workbook. Okay, I'll just select blank workbook there. And you'll see I have different sheets. If you push the plus sign there, you can add, you can select the different sheets down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just move this over so I can see some of the values that I need. And, um, you know, just to not have everything in one cell, okay, these are different cells like A1, B1, B2, A2. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, kind of put all of my data in column, uh, I'll put it in B. The names of those uh, data I'll put in A. Okay, so the first thing I want is the length of my plate. We know that that is 2. And I'll just write M for meters. Okay, if I want to insert something, I just select it, right click it, right click and select insert. And so I can give it a label. Okay, quantity, uh, value, and then units. For example, if I want to make that um, you know, a little bit bigger, I can hit this 
plus sign right down here at the bottom, kind of zoom in. And then if I um, hit sh um, the shift key and then do a right arrow, I'll be able to select all of this. And if I do control B, I'll give it uh, bold values. And if I do control U, it'll underline them. So just a little bit of formatting there. Okay, let me go down, um, you know, the temperature of the hot. Um, I'll do T, oops. And if you need to undo, you just do control Z. Okay, control Z. And uh, T hot is going to be uh, 343, and that's going to be Kelvin. T cold or T of the water um, is going to be equal to 294. Kelvin, okay, so I'm just going to input all of these values. The velocity is 1.45 uh, meters per second. And the uh, mu value, now if I want to put a, um, put a Greek symbol in here, I can do mu, and then we make this a little bit bigger. I'll select home, change that to, for example, to symbol. Oh, I, and if I type, let's see if I can get the symbol in there. Okay, so that makes it into a mu, kind of a Greek letter there. Okay, and then that is going to be 0 0.00979. Um, and I need one more zero in there. Okay, so that is the uh, viscosity of the fluid. And if I want to readjust uh, the, length, the width of those, I can just double click this and it'll automatically adjust to fit the values there. Okay, so right in between the two different uh, columns of the cells, you can double click that in the heading and it'll realign that. Or you can also select this and then when you have this little bar going uh, left and right, you can kind of move it uh, to one side or the other. And then I'm going to put the units there. Uh, that's going to be Pascals times seconds. Okay, now on down we have the row. Okay, again I'm going to um, Label this, okay, do this one as, sometimes you need to expand it a little bit just to be able to see. If you want to pin this down, you can hit this little pin here at the right or uh, hide it. Okay, so this little pin uh, right here at the right, if you want this um, this header thing to be kind of permanently there without uh, disappearing every time you deselect it. Okay, so I'm going to do symbol again. There's my row value. And I'll do 998, and that's going to be kilograms per meter uh, cubed. Okay, and the, uh, let's see, the thermal conductivity is 0 0.061. That's watts per meter, uh, meter Kelvin. Okay, if you want to do superscript, you can do that. You can do all the formatting here if you want to. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the other Microsoft Office uh, products where you can, uh, you know, make things superscript or uh, let's see if I can do that. Uh, looks like it un. Hmm. Looks like I can't. It. Uh, oh, there we go. Now I can do it. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a. Uh, okay, let me go to font. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, superscript. Okay. There, that makes it just look a little bit better. Okay, so uh, let me do a CCP as well. And then 4180, okay, that's my um, heat capacity, and that's gonna be joules, kilogram, uh, Kelvin. Okay, so I have all of my inputs now from my problem statement, and now what I wanna do is calculate some of these derived quantities. Um, for example, the Reynolds number. Okay, now I can, uh, I'll show you two different ways of doing this. Um, you know, one that's going to be just a, um, I think it's a nice uh, way to do these calculations, especially if you have a lot of cells that they depend on. Uh, we can rename some of the values. Okay, so Reynolds number is going to be equal to, okay, you know, right here you see it's density times length times velocity divided by uh, viscosity. So I can say equals, and I can use my left arrow. And then I just go down to density uh, times the length. Okay, so let me go ahead and select length. Uh, it's going to be B2. And then uh, I need the velocity. 
as well and divided by let's see the uh, viscosity okay so there I have my Reynolds number okay now I can also um, rename some of these cells you see up here in the left that is is named as B2 but if I just wanted to name it as L um, then in here instead of using B2 I can just use the name L instead and it'll give me the same answer okay so if I select that again you'll see that it's named L uh, it'll give me a list of the names so you can name some of these you know custom so that when you use them in the calculations it's just a little bit more readable than reading something like battleship you know like a2 b7 something like that okay I'm gonna do prattled number as well uh, prattled number is defined right there okay so equals uh, mu okay times see so p the heat capacity Okay, now these are just dimensionless numbers. Again, don't worry if you don't uh, remember or know what these are. They're just uh, numbers that help us calculate this uh, overall heat transfer coefficient. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate a Nisselt number. Okay, that's going to be also a dimensionless number, and that's going to be 0 0.332 times. Okay, now I'm going to do my Prattle number to the one third power. And then times, in this case, I'm going to use uh, a built-in function, square root, S-Q-R-T. Um, and I'm going to do the square root of the Reynolds number. Okay, so just so you can see that, let me move it over again. And so you can either use E2 to the 1 half or to the 0.5, or you can use this times square root of E2. Okay, now um, I'm going to calculate my um, H value. Um, that's going to be derived from my uh, my other quantities, uh, you know, L and and K and the Nissel number. Okay, so now I have equals the Nissel number uh, times, and then I just do my thermal conductivity and divided by L, which is my length. And as you select L, you'll see that it highlights uh, B2. So it'll show you what it's equal to. You don't want to override some of the built-in Excel functions. You can see those pop up here. Uh, just make sure uh, you don't uh, rename one of your cells to be that. Sometimes it can give you some errors. Okay, so there's our, um, our uh, heat transfer coefficient, and that's going to be watts per meters, uh, watts per meters squared Kelvin. Okay. And, um, hmm. all right, so let's calculate our Q value now. Um, Q value, and in this case, uh, we are assuming that the area of our plate, um, let's just assume that it's going to be one uh, meter, meter squared. Okay, and then our, um, because our, okay, so this expression right here would really be a, you know, per unit area, uh, Q per unit area. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just add an area in there to get a total heat transferred, just to make the units work out. So you'd have to know the area of that plate uh, right there. Okay, and then my Q is going to be equal to my H, okay, which is right here, times my area, times my uh, temperature difference, so it's going to be my hot minus my cold. You can just select those cells if you want to for the calculation. Okay, so that's going to be a total of watts. Okay, uh, I just filled it in. Okay, and if I took out the area, for example, then it would just be watts per meter squared. Okay, so there's um, there's my calculation uh, for this problem that's done in a Google, uh, not in a Google sheet, in a Microsoft Excel sheet. I want to show this as well in a Google sheet um, that you can do a lot of these same calculations um, with uh, Google uh, Sheets as well. You just go to drive.google.com. You have to have a Google account for this. I'll just show you. You know, this will be really quick. Uh, you come over, you create a new Google Sheets. And a very similar format. The one difference with this is that it's all online. 
so it's stored in the cloud uh, and you can access this uh, you know later with um, okay so you can access this later or multiple people can edit this uh, simultaneously okay so I'll do uh, you know this would be problem uh, I'll do homework one two okay and what I'll do is I'll just copy all of this in let's see if I can do that okay I'm gonna copy all of this in okay and then what we'll do is um, we'll um, let's just edit some of these he's just copied in as numbers okay um, the other thing you can do is actually just save the Excel sheet and then uh, you know, import it into the Google Sheets and then it should preserve all of the calculations. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and run through this again. Okay, so that equals, um, let's see, let's go with our row times length. Okay, times length times velocity. Okay, and divided by mu. Okay, there we go. So we have, we just redid that calculation. You could do that for these other ones as well. I'll just do, you know, the, the final Q calculation here as well. Uh, it's just going to be H times A. Okay, A times T hot minus T water. Okay. Okay, and depending on the speed of your internet connection, it's going to be faster or slower. Um, I thought I'd rename this. So let me try this again. Homework one two. Okay, so there I have it. Um, you know, it's saved in uh, now in my Google Drive, and then you can access it later. So a lot of these you can do with either the Google Sheets or the you know Microsoft Excel. Um, you know, they're fairly equivalent. A lot of the same functionality. I will say that Google Sheets is missing just a couple things like a, a nonlinear solver. Uh, there's a couple other things that we're going to be using later on in the course that Google Sheets doesn't have that Microsoft um, Excel does have. Okay, so Microsoft Excel is definitely a little bit mature of a more mature of a, a platform. The nice thing about Google Sheets is that you can collaborate and share, and it's all stored in the cloud. Okay, so that concludes this homework problem. The next one that we're going to be doing is uh, listed here. It's going to be problem number three, and it's just a little bit more complicated. We're going to be dealing with kind of a table of values.